Michelle said it's only like 78 degrees today or something. Michelle said it's only like 78 degrees today or something. Uh, wondering how we're going to manage to survive through the summer's heat. As we, we did a, a short little walk this morning. I don't even know how many miles it was. I, I need to calculate to see how many miles it was. But we did a short little walk this morning. And pretty much halfway through, uh, she says, hey, we, we, had, we, we had the same shirt on. I think it was the same shirt. Not, we weren't wearing the same shirt. It's like the same type of shirt. And I think this is a tri-blend fabric. And about halfway through, she's like, is my back as sweaty as yours? Can you see the sweat on my back like I can see yours? And of course, the answer was yes. So here we are, the two of us, Squirrel Tribe, uh, both, you know, two thirds of the Squirrel Tribe, or maybe 50%, Max is part of the Squirrel Tribe too. You guys are part of Squirrel Tribe as well. And walking around here with sweaty backs in this summer or spring heat. It's not even summer yet, crazy. Be that as it may, we are about to head out and we're about to go and get coffee on a coffee run, so to speak. Now, I don't think it's a real coffee run because I'm pretty sure when we get there, we're not actually going to get coffee. We're, Michelle's gonna get a chocolate strawberry. I think is what they call it. It's a Lotus energy drink that they make. And uh, it's, they put chocolate on top. The kid wants a croissant, croissant. And uh, I don't know what I'm gonna get. Caribbean? Caribbean. So that one is the. Huh. That's the. Okay. Oh, okay. No? okay. We're gonna. That's the croissant? Yeah. That's a, that's a Danish. It was bigger last time. That's a Danish. That's dessert. But we're sitting here and Michelle and I, you know, we got this video. We recorded, so this morning we did this walk and we got this video. And this video is, I'm going to edit this video and I'm going to get it ready to go and upload it later today, maybe. And Michelle's like, well, I guess I'll go record something. And I can feel, I could sense and I could feel the high level of uh, lacking enthusiasm <laughs> in her voice as she said this. And I just started laughing and she started laughing. And I was like, look, I don't have anything to record, so I'm just not going to record. So I just sat there on the couch. I started playing my game. I got this little eight ball pool game. And, uh, and then I was like, you know what? Let's go, let's go, to, let's go get some Causeway. So we're going to go to Causeway. And uh, I said, you know what? We're going to pull a, a page out of Ed's book. And Ed, he's with Film Booth. And we watched a video this morning of the eight tips that I wish I knew starting a YouTube channel or something. You know, the basic how-tos on how to get more views, how to get more views and subs and subscribers and all that good stuff. And one of the things that he mentioned was that he was a digital nomad. He said, basically, he's a, a homeless YouTuber who just rents uh, Airbnbs by the month. And currently in this video, he was in the UAE and he said that when he finds himself in this situation where he's trying to write these scripts that he says he spends eight to nine hours preparing that when he gets to a point where he can't really, he can't really like focus and get over the hump. He just gets up, leaves and goes somewhere else. He goes out, rides a scooter, gets some fresh air, some nature or whatever. 
and he comes back and he's got a completely different mindset and he's better suited to complete the script than just sitting there like how am i going to do this and i said it's almost like you got to go change your diaper i said you got to change your diaper and she's like what are you talking about i said look if you're sitting there wallowing in shit and you know you can't really think straight you need to get out of that shit you need to get out of that funk so you need to change your diaper so essentially that's what we're going to do we're going to go change our diaper which is really odd to say but uh you know i guess it's a you know it's a realistic consideration for life whereas at some point maybe we get old enough to need diapers which would be crazy but it is what it is i actually was thinking about that yesterday the day before yesterday so the day before yesterday we went out and we uh, we spent some time walking and going through these trails and whatnot. Ooh, he in trouble. Anyways, um, Alex, you want me to record you? He's like, where's the eye in? My eyes crossed. <laughs> this is what it is. Like, Don't get. Yeah. Money market app. Bahama after that because something was wrong and I needed food fast. Have like a, let's go eat. <laughs> and he jumps in and starts talking about stuff and she's like, that's wrong. He said he wanted to let some time pass. There we go. Two mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Do you cut off a little? I gotta go ahead and get my chicken. So we went to Tommy Bahama, but at the same time, I ended up going to the restroom to uh, wash my hands before I went to eat. And then they were, as I was leaving the restroom, they, the door opened and they were wheeling this older guy in on a wheelchair. And you know, I think that it was a situation where he was going to need help and assistance to use the bathroom. And as I, you know, I held the door for him and I left and then I'm walking back and I'm like, you know what, there may come a time where it's like, do I, do I decide to, you know, have some other man help me use the bathroom or do I decide to suck it up and figure out how I'm going to shit myself wearing this diaper? And this is a realistic scenario. I think it is. Get ready, warning, urgent warning, prepare. <laughs> but regardless, it is what it is. And it could be worse, right? It could be worse. And, and, and this is actually something that I really need to take into consideration because it's true. It could be worse. And I've almost gotten to the point where it is. And what I realized is that even at this point, it's not that bad. <laughs> it's not as bad as you thought or I thought it might be. And it's from the standpoint of my channel has died. It's literally flatlined to the point of which it almost literally has no views. And it's not that bad. Now granted, self-inflicted i made these changes and i introduced this to the channel that ultimately put it down this path in addition to youtube saying there's another path you could go down and you'll get your views but i just don't want to go down that path so i'm choosing not to i'm choosing to take a different path i'm choosing to maybe almost carve out my own path while also doing something completely different on another channel on different channels because this channel is in a funk this channel is in this this little box in this little bubble and you know it's it's trapped and i could fight my way out or i could choose to take and go the route and the path of alex hermosi and his recommendations of just ignoring it and if you haven't seen it go watch it there's a link on the community post for alex hermosi and it's worth the 20 minutes trust me folks and it's not just about youtube it's not just about comments on social media it's about life and it's about you know overcoming and being the bigger person as you continuously push and strive towards growth and success and that's that's the that's really the underlying message there so here i am today with a channel that i will post videos on 
and I will keep posting more videos for the members. The members are getting all the YouTube, like all the YouTube coaching videos. And if you want to grow a channel, if you want to make money, you want to build a business, they get all those channels. And, you know, it's like, I feel some, some type of way saying it because it's like, well, if you can say it, if you can tell it, if you can teach it, why don't you just do it and get more views? And it comes down to the simple fact that I don't want to do what YouTube's telling me I have to do because I can teach it, but I also understand and realize that YouTube creates a path and a box. And if you can identify what that path is and that box is, and then you can execute on it at a high level, then it'll work. And my path and my box, I'm just not really super interested in. So I'm choosing to ignore it and uh, just wait and see if YouTube changes it. That's it. Meanwhile, I have other channels that have other paths and other boxes that they're in that I enjoy far more and are proven to be far more beneficial and profitable. And so I'm going to do that. So members on the channel get specific youtube coaching videos and members on patreon get specific youtube coaching videos plus the added bonus and extra behind the scenes with michelle and squirrel tribe and so much more that's where we are today and i'm okay with that i'm actually pleasantly surprised at how okay i am with it because i know that it's not going to be like this forever and i also know that the best part about it is is that the only place I can go from here is up. Catch up. See you in my river trying to catch up. Running, see you running, trying to catch up. I see you gasping, leave you breathless. Breathless. Catch up. See you in my river trying to catch up. Running, see you.